Welcome to the Sports Size Podcast. I'm Dr. Ashley Bassett. And I'm Dr. Katherine Logan. On each episode, we chat about the most recent developments in sports medicine and dissect through all the noise so you know which literature should actually impact your practice. Today, we're continuing our special series of episodes to recap the newest research presented at the American Academy of Orthopedic Surgeons annual meeting, our largest orthopedic conference. This year, over 20,000 orthopedic professionals gathered at the AOS annual meeting in San Francisco to take part. On this episode, we are recapping some of the standout posters presented at AOS with Dr. Megan Bishop. If you haven't listened to our last mini episode, what are you waiting for? Go check it out and hear all about the AOS meeting. But today, we're just going to dive right in. If you're looking for a trusted name in osteochondral allograft transplantation, look no further than JRF Ortho. With a stellar track record and a reputation as the leader in fresh osteochondral allografts, JRF Ortho is here to elevate your practice to new heights. JRF Ortho has proudly distributed over 25,000 allografts worldwide, making a significant impact in the field. Their passion for this industry goes beyond the numbers. It's about helping patients and fulfilling their mission of improving people's quality of life. But that's not all. At JRF Ortho, they understand that superior customer care is crucial. They aim to give you one less thing to think about so you can focus on what matters the most, your patients. And they make ordering JRF Ortho easy. They are committed to accommodating your needs and delivering allografts on your terms. You're in control. Choose your scheduling option, whether it's specifying a surgical date, providing a date range, or just requesting the earliest available allograph. Your preferences are their top priority. So, prepare for success. Order with JR Ortho and take control of your orthopedic journey. Welcome back, Megan. We saved the best for last. <laughs> So Welcome excited back. to be back. Thanks, <laughs> Ashley. <laughs> awesome. So our next and final poster is from the Rothman Orthopedic Institute where you practice, and it's titled The Utility of Stress Ultrasound in Identifying Risk Factors for Elbow Ulnar Collateral Ligament Rupture, a longitudinal study of 203 professional baseball players. So this study was performed, as I said, by your colleagues at Rothman Institute, and it aimed to identify anatomic risk factors on dynamic ultrasound that may predispose players to future UCL reconstruction or U future UCL injury. So the authors found that players who ultimately required a UCL reconstruction had greater ulnohumeral joint space at rest, higher rates of hyperechoic foci, and increased UCL thickness on ultrasound compared to players who did not require a UCL reconstruction. So what do you take away from this? So this, you know, great study um, coming out of um, Rothman um, with Dr. Scotty, who's done a lot of this, Dr. Cohen, um, and uh, Dr. Erickson, who all have done really great research on UCL. Um, we, they had over 200 professional baseball pitchers included in it, which is a really robust number uh, mm -hmm. to be able to perform this ultrasound on um, prior to the season. Uh, you know, I think it, it just shows that there are dynamic changes that do occur on the UCL that can be identified on ultrasound. So they showed some kind of higher resting laxity of the joint space and the ulnohumeral joint space that they saw in patients that were going to, that later had a UCL injury, um, more hypoechoic areas, they showed thickness, thicker, thickening of the tendon and things like that. So there are identif identifiable, identifiable features that you can see on the UCL using ultrasound that may, you may be able to counsel patients that, you know, they may be at risk of injuring their UCL. Um, you know, everything has to be taken in a much larger picture than that, obviously, than just putting an ultrasound on it and saying, oh, your, you know, UCL looks slightly thicker and things like that. Obviously, it comes within a realm of like evaluating the athlete as a whole. Um, but this is, a, you know, a good tool uh, to be able to kind of counsel patients and potentially, especially if you can compare from one side to the other, um, kind of a patient's baseline through their pitching arm versus their non-pitching arm. I think that would be some utility to me to see, you know, uh, if there's dynamic changes that are occurring. Um, you know, the only other thing I would add is I, I would imagine all pitchers have changes that kind mm -hmm. of chronically exist in their UCL. Uh, I, I don't know. It would be hard for me to be able to say definitely that that was, they were going to injure their, you know, elbow the season if they have a little bit more thickness on it compared to the, the season before. I don't know that that this data gives us any, any information towards that. Um, you know, mostly to me, this just shows that, you know, ultrasound can be a tool that can be used to identify um, pitchers that may be at risk. And uh, we will see some of these changes on ultrasound uh, on the UCL. I mean, anybody who listens to this show regularly knows I know nothing about baseball. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> it doesn't like come in to my office. Um, so I feel like you and Ashley have a lot more to add since you, you know, your experience at Rothman, this is like the, the place to go for a stress ultrasound. Um, and you know, it's where all the data comes from. So Ashley, um, you know, what are your thoughts? What do you have to, you know, what do you think about this poster? Yeah, so I, I echo everything that Megan said. This is a very well done study, great numbers, really great conclusions. Um, I would say, I guess I would ask the authors, where do we go from here? What, what do we use this information for? The biggest concern I have is that I think a lot of times, like the NFL Players Association will push back on a lot of studies being done because they fear that results will come out that will hurt their players, right? Someone yeah. has an ACL tear, they're not going to perform as well, or they're career length goes down or their you know fantasy scores go down so that person yeah. might not get their contract extension they may they may get cut more than another person and players don't want that so i kind of wonder what this data is going to do i mean i would think teams would love to be able to stress ultrasound all their potential um, players that they have in you know spring training and determine who may be at high risk than others if it's kind of a split the difference between two players which one are you going to take but is that really fair to our athletes. Um, I don't really know the answer to that. I guess I would wonder, is there a prevention program you can do? There's throwing injury prevention programs that they incorporate to pitchers. Is there something you can do and then re-ultrasound them to see if there's changes in the ligament in terms of the thickness or that hypoechoic area or the resting joint space? I'd be really curious to see. And I assume at Rothman, that study is going to be coming in, in the near future, looking at potentially ways to reverse those changes. Um, but I'm just more excited about the future based on this poster. I want to see kind of what comes of this. Give everybody a PRP injection after that. Yeah. That's what they're going to do. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's your new use for that. that. That's what we're doing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or, yeah, I completely agree with you, Ashley. Um, and, yeah, I, I, that's a really great point, too, about some some of the, you know, professional teams and uh, mm associations not really wanting data to be out there that could harm their athletes or put them, you know, at risk for, um, known, like a known predisposition disposition for injury affecting, you know, them in the future. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. Like, I think this is very interesting data. I do think, you know, Rothman has a very, a very skilled team that knows how to do these ultrasounds. Um, I don't know that everyone is, is skilled in performing, you know, these types of dynamic stress ultrasounds on the UCL. So I think that is one downside of this, that it may not be as reproducible throughout. Um, but hey, if anyone's ever like wants to get evaluated through it, we, we certainly have the team to do it, you know, <laughs> to come here. Um, I, I still mostly use MRIs uh, to evaluate my patients to, to look for a UCL injury. I'm not sending, you know, for a stress ultrasound. But we do have um, some of our physicians at Rothman do send uh, all their UCL athletes for stress ultrasounds prior uh, to deciding on a surgical, you know, uh, versus non-surgical treatment. Very interesting. I also think, you know, like you're talking about the players associations, you know, they don't want anybody to sort of be falsely say like their contract isn't as valuable. They, you know, they might look at someone and say, oh, you know, gosh, they're, you know, UCL was thinner. So like, we're going to give them a better contract than the one that was thicker, you know, like, so I, I think it's like, we have to be really careful with this data too. And it's interesting, but it really could affect someone's livelihood. And you know, their ability to play, but you know, we have to watch these things and trend, but I totally get why the players association is like, Hey, wait, what is, does this actually really mean anything? For sure. Um, so yeah, it's always interesting stuff for sure. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Sports Docs. We hope you enjoyed our discussion as much as we did. Make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, and YouTube to stay up to date on all things sports medicine. If you like what you hear, please consider leaving us a review. We also love to see your comments and hear about your questions. You can reach us by email at sportsdocspod at gmail.com or find us on Instagram at the sportsdocspod and Twitter at the sportsdocpod. We love your feedback.